is strength in numbers with all the fucking weird threes. Strength in Numbers by Fever 333. It is the debut album from the California-based uh, rapcore supergroup. Uh, the supergroup is made up of members from Night Versus, The Chariot, and Let Live, which is a band I hold near and dear to my cold, dead heart. Uh, it comes off the back of the debut EP Made in, Made in America that came out last year. At the time, or some point last year, I ranked this as my, well, ranked that as my EP of the year. In hindsight, it's kind of sour in my opinion. When I look back at it, there's only a couple of songs that I listen to on repeat. And those are the songs that feel like they were written with time. And the rest were just sort of like kind of filler, which is a horrible thing to say. But Made in America and Walking in My Shoes feel like just put together better which were admittedly they weren't the main singles but they feel like they were put together better than say excuse me like a song like we're coming in or point of view but that's just me um and i think it's definitely that ep is definitely sounding on me more listening to this because of that production i said about before with john feldman which a previous episode so john feldman is the Goldfinger singer slash guitarist. He has produced some of the albums he's produced is Ungrateful by Escape the Fate. He did Cardiology and Youth Authority by Good Charlotte. He did uh, Veil and Richard and Divine by Black Veil Bride. He's worked with Five Seconds of Summer, The Used, Blitz Kids, Plain White Tees. And for me, a reputation like that is not what I wanted to have associated with guy he used to sing and let live and like, I'll, I'll throw my hands up here it was really hard to separate let live from this project because this is not let live at all let live is dead Wah. um but either way to have that backing along with jason allen butler i was and looking back on like what he's done before i was very 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 tr um, trepidatious in terms of like moving forward then I heard the remix of Made in America. It was with John Feldman and Travis Barker of Blink-182. And that, the single of the remix sounds so much fucking better than the original. It's got that like big bass backing behind it. Um, even with the like rap verses in there now, I still hugely prefer it to the original. And then when Burn It came down, which is the lead singer from Strength in Numbers, it was a similar sort of thing again where Travis and Feldman worked together and it made for a lot more angry rock sound. So when it was when I read that Travis Barker was sticking on board for the entire album, I was a lot more hyped for it. And I was a lot more hyped for a more aggressive sound. This is the point where I was still like having trouble separating Jason from Let Live. What this album is in like when it eventually came out is very pop inspired rap core you've got a song like animal which has the millennial whoop in the chorus so that's kind of what you need um there's a lot more electronics in this album than expected uh for whatever reason i just did not notice them that much on the ep i know there's um the song he did with yellow whoop that's got a lot of electronics but i kind of expected that from like working with a out and out hip hop star, and I, personally, I just don't think they were as prominent in the EP. But there we go. It's to the point where, like, the electronics in the album range from being very hip hop based. So, in songs like One of Us and The Innocent, they are much more they create a much more hip hop sounding sound. Whereas in Inglewood and Coup de Talk, it's more R and B, which I think suits Jason better because he's got such a first time such an incredible voice i think that softer more r&b style vocal suits him better than trying to keep up with like a shout rap for hip-hop that's just me unquestionably though jason is the ringleader to this project uh lyrically it's it's spreading that political message it wants to get across about things like police brutality and inequality um and you've also got much more personal songs like again like 
Inglewood, which is all about him growing up in LA. Um, musically, it frames his vocals to show his range. So I said about before, in the more R&B parts like Inglewood, he can sing like a fucking angel. And then there's other parts like in Burn It or Pray For Me where he can really get a strong scream or um, and there's a song where he can just get the like the rap side of him out. This, ch- this is very much easily I think they could have promoted this as a Jason Alan Butler solo thing instead of a group a super group project for me the best tracks on the album are the slash three songs so you've got pray for me which oh my god the chorus in this fucking song is incredible the strength he has behind the delivery for the words pray for me is unreal and it's the sort of thing that's stuck in your head for the rest of the day it's fucking unreal and then you've got Inglewood slash three, which is like a seven minute ballad. It's kind of split into two halves. So the first half of the smooth R and B, and it's got like little bits where he does. He's a bit more aggressive, a bit more shouty, but overall it's quite a smooth R and B kind of sound. Very delicate chorus, and then the second half is yeah, where it's a lot more. It's kind of sound more like a bad issues B side. So for me, the song should have stopped. I think all three of the slash three songs are guilty of it. You've got like the bulk song and then you've got like a little bit at the end. The little bit in the end of every single song probably doesn't need to be there. Um, like I said, for Inglewood, it sounds like an Issues B-side. For Out of Control, which is the third of the three. Um, in my opinion, the weakest of the three. The first two minutes are very confrontational rap core. And then it sort of like bounces between like a low dub into like fast pace. Oh, sorry. Bounces from low, like a low dub, fast pace hip hop into a huge, more uplifting callback chorus. Um, I think that was the one off the top of my head. That was the song where I thought the first half should have gone and they should have kept the second half. But yeah, it's for each of those three, it feels like they're trying to mash two songs together. But the the song that takes up the most amount of time in each of the three, or like the part of the song, I should say, that takes up um, bulk of the song. That's all the ones that should have stayed behind and then just trim off all the excess. Personally, you could have had it like two minute bout of like interlude or just do what Papa Roach did and have a random two minute long, sorry, no, like 90 second long hardcore song in the middle of a rap album. Fuck it, yeah. A lot of the um, pop elements of this album comes in those three songs as well. Um, a lot of the work for the entire album has gone into those choruses and it's exactly what pop music's supposed to do. It grabs you in with those hugely powerful, hugely catchy choruses and then it takes you on a journey, it takes you about all the band's personal message in the verses later. And that's how Jason wants to get his message across now and that's okay. Uh, I think for what he wants to talk about, it is very... Um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Very relevant. There we go. It's very relevant for, for what's happening at the moment. And like, there's a lot of people from both sides of the coin. So a lot of alternative fans, a lot of um, more contemporary fans, at some point were into Let Live, whether it was The Black is Beautiful or Fake History or um, If I'm the Devil. So that band got a lot of attention. So a lot of that following will follow Jason into his new ventures. And they'll hear this. They'll also have new, um, a new audience with songs like Inglewood, which I think, if J- if FIFA three three do want to spread this message, I think they should release Inglewood as a single, because that will bring in a lot more contemporary listeners. This is as a whole because of those choruses. It's a super catchy album. There's a lot of fodder on it. I will happily say, but the choruses throughout are just so strong. Um. And if I can be a shit heel little analytic, I would say if Jason does want to spread this message of, well, in a way that's all encompassing rap core sign away. So he's bringing in people from uh, the mainstream and also keeping the alternative fans happy. I would personally say bring in the producer of the last Let Live album, 
uh, if I'm the devil, a gentleman called Justin Pilbro. Now, on paper, I can completely see why Feldman would be the best person. Like, his albums are very pop-centric and very... Uh, usually the core fan base will go against the album because of how much it's how clean it is and that kind of thing so I can see why bringing Feldman in would be a, in theory a good idea especially if they were to bring in that more more people but a lot of people consider If I'm the Devil to be uh, Let Live's softest album which I, I agree with but the songs of that album that could easily fit in with uh, just oh fuck now basic radio um, and it just it appeals to a much bigger audience if in if I'm the devil um, I see if I can find because again trying to think of things so songs like if I'm well then track title if I'm the devil a uh, couple called quiet they are so much more well, foreign cab rides as well. It's where they're not quite R and B because obviously this, this wasn't what Let Live were about, but they were a lot more um, slowed down, laid back, chill songs. And I think adding that kind of production style would work better than working with Feldman because he can do the choruses, but a lot of the time, it, like I said, the verses on some of these songs do let the album down. But I think for a first, al first album, as, and it might be a super group, it might have three great musicians there, but at the end of the day, this is still just their first album. So I think they can only go from strength to strength from here. No pun intended with the strength in numbers, but the way that they are, they're not calling the performances shows or anything like that, they are called demonstrations. They've got the uniform of like the um, jumpsuits. They are visually all there that you need and I think I think well to put in perspective how I keep blagging on about you need to get Pilbro in you need to do this you need to do that they are already main support to bring the horizon in their arena tour like may, I, fucking, maybe I'm wrong they're already doing it but that's just like you know my opinion that's what I'm fucking here for if you enjoyed the King Blues back when they were good uh, there's a lot of Rage Against Machine in this, and I like my outsider one. If you really enjoyed the 100, I think you really go for this. Um, like I said, a lot of like poppy bits in there, but there's also a lot enough there to keep you satisfied if you are more fan of um, the hardcore side of rapcore. Pray for me if nothing else. Listen to that because God. Um, so yeah, that was Strength in Numbers by Fever 323. Um, all these albums. Are